This is Code Academy. I'm currently working on Introduction to JavaScript. I am on, well, let's see, Functions Lesson Part 7, Helper Functions. All right, let's see what we got here. Instructions. In the previous exercise, we created a function to find the number of monitors to order for an office. Now let's write another function that uses the monitor count function to figure out the price. Oh, okay. And here's that function we created in the last exercise. Below the monitor count, create a function declaration named cost of monitors that has two parameters. The first parameter is rows. Hey, I'm noticing something. And the second parameter columns. Leave the function body empty for now. Okay, so we want a new function. So we're going to write the word function, not monitor count, cast, cost of monitors, just like they have. And then the parameters, just like the above function, are going to be rows and columns. We do need the function body, which is the curly bracket, but it can be empty for now. So there we are. Let's, oh, let's hit run and see. Perfect. Moving on. Time to add some code to the function body of your monitors, of your cost of monitors, to calculate the total cost, all right? Add a return statement that returns the value of calling monitor count rows and columns multiplied by 200. Wow. All right. So that's something that here, I'm going to go ahead and start putting it in right inside of our cost of monitors, monitor count rows, comma, columns. OK, and then I'm going to multiply this by 200 semicolon. Now, this is something that we haven't seen be Four. Oop, I want to return this. Return. All right. This is something we haven't seen before. We are having one function use another function, and that's completely okay. Keep in mind, none of this runs until we call the function outside, right? So for me to actually use the cost of monitors function, I would need to call it out here. When I do call cost of monitors, it's going to run monitor count. And you'll see what I mean. Great. We should save the cost to a variable. Declare a variable named total cost using the const keyword. All right. And remember, we capitalize the start of new words. Don't capitalize the first words of your variable. That means something else. It means class um, declaration using the const keyword. Dot, got that. Assign total cost the value of calling. Okay. And so what they are asking us is set it equal and then call the function, which means use that function name to ask the computer to run that function. And then with arguments of five and four again. So arguments, these are parameters. Rows, columns is parameter. Rows, columns up here is a parameter. But when we use something to mean that, this five and this four is an argument. And that's because when we say cost of monitors, the computer is going to say, okay, where's that? Uh, oh, here's a cost of monitor function. Okay, I need to run that. All right, rows is five, columns is four. Check. Drops down and then says, okay, I need to return. All right, let me run monitor count. And then five for rows. It grabs from here. Columns was four. And then run this. It multiplies rows and columns together. It returns that to here now. So that would be 20, and then it's going to multiply it by 200, hopefully. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Let's run it and see. Looks good so far. To check that the function worked properly, log total cost to the council. All right. Semicolon. Let's go ahead and try it out. Yep. 20 times 200 would be four grand. Awesome. So that's the code that worked for me. Great, let's keep going. 